All right, it's great to see you guys. <laughs> Coach, um, you, know, you had a lot of size going up against Louisville. Were, were you surprised at how well they were able to defend you, especially on a lot of the uh, inside shots? Uh, I don't know that we have a lot of size. Um, but they, they did a really good job defensively for the most part, for most of the game. Um, you know, <clears throat> there was a stretch in the third quarter where I thought, um, uh, thank you. There was like a five minute stretch in the third quarter where I thought it got away from us, where um, we just, I think, lost our composure a little bit and the offense kind of fell apart. And um, we made a lot of mistakes tonight defensively, and they took advantage of every one of them. Every time we made a mistake tonight, they got a bucket. I mean, that's credit to them. I mean, they they played well. They shot the ball well. You know, they have you know Asia had played <clears throat> made big buckets for them. It's not so many how many you make, but she made big ones. You know, and um, and they had a lot of kids step up and make shots that don't normally make those shots. And that's what you need in big games like this for people to play above, you know, where they normally play. And they had a couple kids do that. Dana Evans, in particular, um, may have been one of those kids you, you were talking about. What was she doing tonight that was so hard for you guys to stop? <clears throat> you know, what happens when you have a kid like Asia Durr, you, 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 if you're not careful, you spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to keep her from getting shots that a lot of other people end up wide open. And it's unfortunate, but it happens. Um, and that's always a dilemma for every for every coach that's coaching against a team that has somebody like that. Do you do you spend all your energy trying to guard one player and leave everybody else and hope that they play their normal game, or do you just let let their best player get 35 or 40 and don't guard anybody? I mean, make sure the other guys don't score. So. You know, I thought for the most part, defensively, I mean, they score a lot of points. I think they're in the 80s, aren't they? Something like that. And until we started fouling and all that, they were in the 60s. So I don't think our defense was that much of a problem. But like I said, that third quarter killed us offensively. What led to Louisville's rebounding advantage? They're better rebounders. How's that for a genius answer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're traditionally... Uh, a pretty good rebounding team this year. We're we're not really we're not really a great rebounding team. Um, so we we struggle with teams that that have the kind of uh, size and quickness that Louisville does. And um, you know <clears throat> we we don't get a lot of offensive rebounds. And I bet you, yeah. I mean, they got 35 defensive rebounds. Well, shit, we missed a lot of shots. They better get a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Gino, for those of us who follow you, we'll lump together the Baylor and Louisville games. Yeah. Did you see anything better from four weeks ago when you were down at Baylor? And what were the disappointments from tonight from, you know, the, the obvious, you know, and can you win without Kristen Williams not playing great? I mean, every team needs uh, everybody on board, right? If you're going to win the big games on the road, you need everybody not just to play well, but you need some kids to play um, better than well. And um, um, we didn't have enough. We didn't have enough contributions from enough people. And I thought we were way better than we were in the Baylor game tonight. But that five-minute stretch in the third quarter, we looked just like we looked against Baylor. So we went from looking like that for 20 minutes to looking like that for five minutes. So we made some progress since that game. Um, you know, um, you know, the, 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 in a normal world, like why would this be a big story? Home team ranked third in the country beats the second ranked team in the country by 11 for their first win in 17 tries, 18 tries. In the real world, that's not that big a deal, is it? But because it's UConn, it's a big deal. 
Well, I said before the season starts, this isn't typical UConn team. So people are starting to get used to the idea that I was right. Yeah, we're human. We kind of sucked this year, to be honest with you. And we need to get better. Coach, there's more than 17,000 fans at the KFC Yum Center tonight. Just yeah. How do you feel your team has kind of handled playing in this atmosphere? I mean, we, we played in a lot of big places. Um, we, did we handle it great? I don't know. We're down one at halftime. And we, we had a five-minute stretch where we were lousy. I don't think the crowd had anything to do with it. You know? You could put 25,000 in there and take out Asia, Asia third, we would have won by 30. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Walls was, was grateful for your being here in this post-game show. You're a program that doesn't have to go on, on the road and play these high-risk games. Why do you do it? Um, I do it so that I'm trying to increase the chances that we lose because we win too much and it doesn't help us to win that much. And it doesn't help uh, us get better. It, it, it used to be that kids were so competitive and they were so driven to win that you didn't have to worry about that stuff. In today's world, kids aren't motivated by, by much. So you're trying to put them in situations where they have to struggle to win. So our schedule is even worse next year. It's even harder next year. Um, so yeah, I want them to grow. I want them to get better. I want them to to see what it feels like to have you know the things that you want to try not work, the things that always work not work, and you got to figure out a different way to do it. I don't think we we should shy away from that just because we want to protect that record. I mean, I've we've been doing this for as long as I've been coaching. You know, how many places can I take my team where there's a good chance we're going to lose? Because then if we beat that team, then that's a hell of a win. And that's the way we've always operated. So I'm probably the least surprised person when we lose these games. I'm like, okay. Like you said, I'm oh, sorry. Where are you? Down here in front. Yeah. Like you said, people do consider it a big deal, you know, to beat UConn. Sure. And you being friends with Jeff for so long. Um, I mean, can you appreciate what this means to him sure. that finally after 14 tries he Absolutely. got the best of you? 17. <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely. I, I, I know exactly what, what this feels like to him. Um, I, I still remember the day we beat Tennessee at home for our first win against the number one team in the country and what that felt like and what you know that did for our program and um, you know, I, I mean, I, I, these people that follow us on a regular basis, I tell them all the time, you know, every team's biggest crowd is when we come to town. It's unusual when it's not, okay? The best thing that could happen when that happens is the home team wins. So now all of a sudden, it's a big win for them. Fans get all excited. More fans come and watch. Now all of a sudden there's another good basketball program. And if we keep playing them, that's another really tough opponent. Otherwise, I might as well just play against my grandsons in ping pong and beat the hell out of them. <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna put ourselves in a situation where beating us, you know, is a big deal. It should be a big deal. Those kids deserve it tonight. They played their asses off. They should really be proud of themselves. You know? Um, and he, he, he's done an amazing job coaching and building this program. Some teams build, some coaches just want to have good teams. Well, you don't, you don't have the success that he's had without having built a great program. And uh, beating them has always been hard. Sometimes we made it look easy, but it's always been hard. Always. The ACC is adding uh, games to the schedule, which may make scheduling this more difficult in the future. Do you hope this series continues? Yeah. So the ACC is adding games. So that means he's going to have less non-conference games. Okay? 
So if he chooses someone other than us to play, he's a big baby. Because <laughs> he's going to have to play somebody, right? Unless he wants to quit after his first win. <laughs> and then tell me all summer I won the last one. That's what I did with my son. First, first time he beat me, one-on-one. -on -one. I said, that's it, I'm done. 2,172 and one, I'm done. <laughs> Considering your familiarity with, with um, Jeff and, and the Louisville program, is this Jeff's best team that he's had? or? Do I don't think so. I don't think so. He's had some great teams here. I thought the Angel McCartry team was really, really good. Um, you know, the team that when they beat Baylor and went to the Final Four, I thought that was a really good team. But this team plays really well together. And um, um, they have a lot of the pieces that you need. Um, you know, he's got a couple big kids that know their role. You know, they play good defense, they rebound, they, you know, they do the little things. He's got kids that know, you know, they're going to be open because there's so much attention paid. Uh, on Asia, and their job is to knock down a couple shots. You know, they they play pretty good defense. Uh, he's got a really, really good team. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they're in the Final Four. I mean, that wouldn't surprise me one bit. You know, they're really good. Um, and obviously, they're really good at home. They should be. You know, this is a great this is a great place to play. I don't know how he doesn't get every kid he recruits. <laughs> Gino, uh, I, don't, I don't. We don't get him anymore. <laughs> if we didn't keep getting him, we would have won tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gino, uh, yeah. <coughs> I think the last time you lost more than one game in a season was 2013, and beating these guys for the national championship lost four games there, that year. What do you? From a point right now, this late in the season, what do you want to do most to close the gap to, to be able to win a national championship? What, what's the biggest challenge right now? Well, the interesting thing is that <clears throat> this is one of those years where um, how big is the gap really? You know, it seems to me that like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six maybe, I don't know, wherever they put another name recently, where they, five, six, I don't know. So if you go by the polls, uh, there's not a really big gap between one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's not like you got to do a lot to to close the gap. But there's some things we got to fix with within our own within our own team, and and they all popped up in those five minutes, you know, in the in the third quarter, and and uh, and all the defensive assignments that were missed. Um, you know, can you fix those? Um, you know, you like to think that you can, but other people are going to keep getting better too. So it's not like we're the only ones that are going to improve. You know, um, when we were head and shoulders better than everybody else, I knew they could never catch us because we kept getting better and they kept getting better and the gap always stayed the same. Well, now the gap isn't so wide between everybody. But still, if we keep working and getting better, they're going to get better too. So it might just be getting the right team at the right time in the right environment and see where you can go. But um, now we got we, we got a lot of things missing if you're talking about a national championship team. But there's a lot of things missing in our team that maybe we can fix. Some years you can't. Some years you just can't fix them. And we've got about a month to figure that out. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, a few times earlier this year, you kind of wondered aloud, aloud how your players would react in those trying stretches, kind of like the third quarter tonight. Yeah. You said, "Will they, will they kind of look at everyone else and say, who's going to do it? I'm not ready to do it.' You know, is that what you're sensing in some of these trying stretches? And is there yeah. one takeover player that you're hoping emerges?" Or? Yeah, we don't have that person. Yeah. You know, and that's 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 the reality. And I think in the Baylor game and tonight during those stretches. And there was a couple guys on our team that they wanted to be that person and try to do it by themselves, and they're just not good enough to do it. They're not. And then you saw the last three minutes of the game. The last three minutes of the game, two and a half, three minutes, whatever, that was probably the, the best we've looked in a long time against this kind of competition. Those last three minutes, we were really, really good. We got shots. We got, you know, our guys were the – 
there was a feeling out there those last three minutes. It wasn't like, just, just roll over and get it over with. So that was what we need. We don't need one, you know, we don't need Crystal coming in there and trying to win the game by, you know, hoping, hoping I get fouled. You know, we don't need Feast, you know, to try to be super, superwoman. That's not who she is. Or, or Lou, all of a sudden I want to be the best post-up player in the country, you know, and try to score. Lou, we just ran something different and got a bucket. I wanted you to run again. I know, but I thought we should run this. Okay. <laughs> what do I know? I've only been doing this 40 years. <laughs> so I think we learned those last three minutes that, no, we can't. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's tough to accept, maybe, for them that one of them can't just take over and do it, but that's not who we are this year. That's not who we are.